It is not just European leaders who are being spied on. You are too, by countries and companies. When you drive your car, do your shopping, or more obviously, perhaps use your computer, you're being tracked and information on you stored and then used to influence you and your behaviour. We have been told that our, we are giving our data away on social media sites, but the problem, it appears, spreads far beyond that. And while data as a word may sound innocuous, giving it away can be a serious issue. To give us her perspective on it all, we're joined by researcher and author Carissa Villiers. Thanks so much for your time. Can I start simply by asking you, why is privacy so important? It's important because it's a matter of power. A lot of people think it's just something individual, it's just a personal preference. But first and foremost, it's a collective endeavour. Um, so privacy is much is as much collective as it is personal. And the lack of it gives others power over you. The more they know about you, the more they can know what you'll do next, the more they can influence your life, and the more they can influence our collective life, like we saw in the Cambridge Analytica case, our democracies are at risk. Because when we think of it, you know, as the average Joe Soap, we think, well, if I like, you know, a pink robin on Twitter or, or whatever else, I mean, how much does that actually change anything? How dangerous can that be? Yeah, one of the problems is that it doesn't seem dangerous at all. What do I care that Facebook knows the music I like? But if Facebook uses that information to infer very sensitive things like my mood and then sells it to bankers and then I don't get a loan because of it and then you and I are not being treated as an equal citizen anymore because we're treated on the basis of our data. So the products we see, the, the opportunities that get offered to us, how much we pay for the same service, how much we wait in line even when we call customer service, all that is based on our data. And if we don't have equality of opportunity anymore, there is a fundamental pillar of democracy that is missing. And not to mention the possibility that this data can be used for personalized propaganda, which is much more effective than pro propaganda used to be, which everybody could see it. So journalists and academics and ordinary people could criticize it, we could discuss it. But now, uh, political campaigns, for instance, the Trump campaign had six million different ads based on people's personalities. So many times they never got to discuss that in the public sphere. Yeah, that's everything we like, the comments we make, they're actually analysing our personality and then using that to influence us. Uh, but give us a better idea of how is our data taken? Because a lot of us are aware of it on social media, but it seems that nearly everything we do is vulnerable to it. Nearly everything you do, uh, even when you walk down the street, there might be private cameras that are catching you and uh, even catching the signal on your phone to try to infer where you've been. Uh, say if you have a smart car when you get into it, um, it doesn't on only track your location and where you go, but also how fast you drive on the basis of both the car, but also your phone is tracking that. It tracks how much you weigh. The seat is actually tracking your weight. Um, what kind of music do you like? And again, like I said, uh, bankers are, are buying data from Spotify to figure out people's moods. Um, every time you search for something online, it says something about you. Most people search what they're worried about. Um, their diseases, for instance, uh, whether they're looking for a divorce lawyer, whether they're thinking about having a child, whether they're thinking about buying a property, all of that we search online. Our credit history, our purchasing history, um, everything you've ever said on, on, on social media, but also the, the things that, for instance, you've typed on, on Facebook, but then regretted and, and deleted, that is also being recorded. Absolutely everything you do that interacts with that computer is being recorded. And some of it seems not very dangerous, but the, the dangerous thing is that they use the most innocuous thing to infer sensitive data about you. And then there are these companies called data brokers who try to have a file on every internet user and then they sell it to the highest bidder. So it could be insurance companies, it could be uh, prospective employers, it could be governments, anyone can buy this data, including um, sort of ex-partners ex who might be abusive, which is a, a very um, big concern. It sounds absolutely terrifying what you're describing, but one wonders at this point, like, how can we protect ourselves? I mean, I know there's certain you know, search engines that are, are safer than others. I'm thinking of DuckDuckGo, we can change our email. But ultimately, a lot of it we're nearly forced into. Ultimately, we need regulation, but for regulation to happen, people have to change their habits so that we create pressure both on companies and on the government. So yes, instead of using Google search, use DuckDuckGo. Instead of using WhatsApp, use Signal. Instead of using Gmail, use ProtonMail. They're always alternative. They're very easy to use. Most of them are free. Um, use VPNs, say no to cookies, um, turn off your Wi-Fi when you go outside. Just create resistance. Don't just accept 
a system that is based on the systematic and mass violation of our rights. That's just not acceptable and we shouldn't get used to it. You mentioned cookies there and it can be quite tedious sometimes to, to click all those options to take off the cookies every single time. There had been talk that Google was moving away from cookies uh, on its side, but I believe that they're still going to take data, are they not? Yeah, they are. They're, they're developing a system that is a bit more sophisticated, um, but that still kind of substitutes cookies and it excludes other companies. So it's still, they, they still haven't changed their business model and they're not questioning themselves. Um, so it's going to, going to be a problem still. Now there's uh, an association called NOIB that defends privacy that is challenging these companies that make it very burdensome for people to say no to cookies. And they, they're saying that this is illegal. So hopefully we might see some changes in the future that makes it a lot easier to say no to cookies. But in, in the end, we have to change that system because we shouldn't put the burden on individuals. Just like you can trust your government that you can drink safe water from the tap, you shouldn't need to um, say no every time. The default should be no data collection. Indeed, you need, we need legislation on it. But just if I can actually go back, I know a lot of people, the WhatsApp to signal move was in the news quite recently, but a lot of people were reluctant because they said, well, hang on a minute, I was told WhatsApp was an encrypted system and very safe, and now I'm going to switch everything and give a new company all my information, and the same thing could happen in the future. Yeah, there are no guarantees, but there are uh, good symptoms. So, for instance, Signal is not a company, it's not non for profit. So that, that's one thing that they don't have an interest in, earning more money. Another thing is that it's open source, so cryptographers can actually check their uh, code and make sure that it's safe, and that's much more safe than, than WhatsApp. And it doesn't sell your metadata or anything. If you compare the Apple label uh, between Signal and WhatsApp, you'll see that Signal has and one item, and WhatsApp has a, a whole list of data that it collects and then uses. Is there any way when we have, all of us at this stage, I think, have given quite an amount of data away, is there any way of getting it back or taking back control apart from, from here on switching our behaviour? Absolutely. When we regulate these things, we need to make sure that data gets deleted periodically because it's just too dangerous for society to keep it sloshing around. It's like a ticking bomb and it's, it's dangerous for national security. We can get hacked on the basis of this data. Uh, and so eventually we need to make sure that that data gets deleted. And I think I'm optimistic. We'll, we'll manage it. It's going to take some time and effort and we need to resist, but it's definitely possible. You bring up hacking there. Um, I believe that there's some theories out there that the internet is deliberately insecure in order to get our data. And that's why, you know, we're seeing so much more signs of this cyber hacking. That's exactly right. And it's become too dangerous because cyber hacking is going up and up. And just to give an example, if hackers were to just hack 10% of our electrical appliances and turn them on at the same time, they could bring down the national electric grid and that would be hugely um, dangerous for a country, especially in, in the context, for instance, of a pandemic. And it's not hypothetical. These attacks have happened to, to for instance, to the UK um, national grid. And it, it's a matter of time before they work, unless we change the system. You talked a lot about legislation. There was one that came in in the European Union, that GDPR. Does that work? It works. It was a huge step forward. And it, I think it was the best we could manage at the time. But it's not enough. Clearly, it's not enough because every week we still have privacy scandals. Um, so we need to go beyond that. But it changed the world. It changed how we talked about uh, privacy and it changed how we thought about it. So it, it, it was very important, just not enough. Do you think, because it all comes down to money at the end of the day, doesn't it? And these companies, you know, have a lot of sway, really, when it comes to national politics. I mean, do you think that there is a willingness at a national political level to make the changes you're suggesting? There are two reasons why there can be. One is that governments are realizing how much of a national security danger this is, and that motivates them to regulate. And the second one is that privacy can be a competitive advantage. So we're seeing with Apple that people are choosing more and more of their products because they're defending privacy. So when companies realize this, if they're smart enough and they want a long-term um, plan, they will change their business model. It's like kind of uh, betting on oil today. You know that sooner or later, it's, 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 a, it's something of the past. The future is clean energy. In the same way, this data system is a thing of the past. It's, it's so dangerous that it's unsustainable.
Carissa Avelis, thanks so much for taking time out to talk to us here on France 24. Carissa Avelis is there, Associate Professor at the Institute for Ethics of AI at Oxford and also author of the books you can see behind her there of Privacy is Power.